Welcome to Souls Harbor Tabernacle Sunday morning service. We want to extend greetings to everyone. We hope that you're continuing to tune in on Facebook and uh, Twitter and all the other social medias. Uh, and we're on uh, YouTube, of course. So, I want to thank you for those that have uh, wrote in. I want to continue to offer the book for you, Troubled Churches, My Dreams and Visions. And recently I was uh, I shared one of my dreams uh, that I had with uh, our Attorney General, William Barr. Something that I think would pertain to uh, his job and everything and encouraged him to continue to do do his work and uh, not to be afraid to uh, bring justice So we'll just leave it at that but My shipwrecked life is another book that I'd like to send to you and uh, Tribulation Saints The seven churches of Revelation you get a lot of good study out of that and wrote that book uh, several years ago so uh, $10 for the troubled churches, send in $10, or send in $6 for one of the other books. And uh, uh, you can write to Post Office Box 3508, and that's Paducah, Kentucky, 42002. Go right straight to the post office. And we will send you that postage paid with the $10 or $6 offering indicate which book that you'd like to have. Appreciate you tuning in. Post Office Box 3508. Amen. I watch these programs, you know, on different uh, channels and different uh, different ministries, and they'll give the address or the phone number so fast that uh, uh, you can't, you have to rewind it and play it over several times. <laughs> Maybe I'm just slow, but uh, that's what I have to do in order to get it. But we want you to get it right, Post Office Box 3508, and that's Paducah, Kentucky, 42002. That's all you got to have. All right, I want to uh, read to you some scripture out of the 12th chapter of the book of Hebrews this morning. And uh, this involves something that we don't like to deal with. Most of us don't like to deal uh, with correction. Amen? A lot of us uh, parents... We don't like to deal with correcting our children or we don't like to deal, you know, we you hear the old expression, you know, uh, goes back to uh, when I was a little kid. Uh, they'd say, uh, this is going to hurt me and it is you. And uh, one of the Little Rascals movies I remember seeing is that Spanky, he knew he's going to get a, he's going to get a spanking from his father for doing something wrong. So he, he hid, he put a book inside his pants. And uh, so when his dad had told him, they said, now this is going to hurt me than it is more than it is you. Uh, literally came to pass for him because he started whipping him while the book was pretty hard and it hurt, hurt uh, his father's hand. So I guarantee you that uh, chastening will be something that you have to deal with in life. And chastening and sometimes uh, chastening ourselves, you know, uh, we, uh, you've heard the expression, well, you just need to focus. You need to focus on something. You need to, you need to get, get your mind cleared about it. That's part of chastening, see. Uh, chastening is, is part of the learning program. And we're going we're gonna to learn about chastening. I want to read starting at verse 5, chapter 12 of Hebrews. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. And if you endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are you bastards and not sons. Now I'm just reading from the King James. That's how it reads it. Which means that you know, you're know you not really a true son uh, of God. Not really a true son. So chastening comes along 
with uh, Christianity, if we're to be a child of God, then we sometimes need chastening. Chastening is, is not just rebuke. Sometimes we need rebuke. And sometimes we need correction in something like that. Sometimes we might go astray, go off, off the trail a little bit, you might say. And, and uh, God has to pull the reins on us and, and say, well, not that way. Just like when I take my little dog out to walk, you know, he wants to go this way and I want to go that way. And I, I got the leash though. So I give him a little tug. Nope, now we're not going that way. We're going this way. So that's what God does to us sometimes. He will pull on the leash a little bit. Come on. We're, uh, we're His. We belong to Him. The Bible says that, that uh, He has bought us with a, with a price. And that uh, 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 we, we belong to God. And so we should uh, also give of Him our, our body and our soul and our spirit unto Him. Because He paid the price for our sins. Amen. He paid the price for our soul. And if we're a born again Christian, you belong to God. He's, he's your Father. You can go to Him uh, when you need help. Amen. See, you, he he's points out here the warnings that they had forgotten about the exhortation uh, that speaks to them about not to despise the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when you're rebuked of Him. You see, God does rebuke us sometimes. I've had God take me to the woodshed a few times, as the old expression goes, and uh, done something uh, that I shouldn't. I'm not talking about sin necessarily. We shouldn't be sinning. But I'm talking about I made a decision or done something that uh, in the work of the Lord that I thought was right, and, and the Lord just checked me on it. You know, he, he said, no, nah, that's not right. I didn't want that. You weren't supposed to do that. You're supposed to, to do this. You know, so uh, I've had a few corrections, a few chastisements, uh, I remember several years ago, starting out in the ministry, you know, I really had a zeal to preach the gospel. Oh, well, I wanted to get out there and preach, you know. And as a young fellow, you know, uh, I wanted a tent. Uh, I prayed about it, you know, and I prayed about it for a tent to go out and put put the tent up, you know, wherever, and, and preach to, to others. After, after all, I'd been saved in a tent revival uh, when I was a child. Uh, A.A. A. Allen, uh, the evangelist A.A. A. Allen, came to Wood River, Illinois, Put up his great big tent. And uh, I remember the night that I got saved. I was eight years old. And he preached on hell that night. Now some people say, well, you don't have to preach on hell to get people saved. Well, I'll tell you what, it worked for me. Come on. Uh, because hell is a real place. And I realized that without Christ, I was going in that direction. My reward would be if I died without Christ, would be an eternal hell. And we... we uh, many preachers have stopped preaching that. You know, they they they, they want to love everybody in. You know, come on, they, they want to put their arms around. Oh, you're pretty good. You know, you're you're just as good as anyone else. Come on in. We'll pat you on the back. You know, and nice little Christian. We'll pet you a little bit. Nice little Christian, and just sit there and and, and uh, uh, we'll we'll get you to heaven. Just just trust us. A lot of pastors, you know, uh, they uh, have too many people trusting them. Hello, uh, and, and they want to. They, they want everybody to follow them, but uh, but if listen, if pastors, if you're not following the Lord the way you should, if you're if you're not preaching the word the way you should, you know a lot of people is going to fall in a ditch with you. Come on, a lot of people are going to follow. They follow you, and they're going to fall right with you. Make sure you preach the gospel, preach the word, Amen. And, and don't fear what man will do or what they say. Come on, I've been thrown out of a few churches because I preached the gospel. I preached to them the truth. And they got rid of me. Come on. But listen, I'd rather preach the gospel and man get rid of me than to compromise the gospel and have God get rid of me. Come on now. I'd rather have that way. You know, come on. That God not get rid of me, but man wants to get rid of me. Come on. So uh, he said, despise not this, the chastening of the Lord. And I looked up the word chastening here, and there's some notes here. I use the uh, Dake Bible, and he's, it's pretty inform informatory, uh, pretty, uh, pretty good. And when I, I looked at the, the word chastening here, it comes from a Greek word, paidia. It's the way I pronounce it. And it means child training. And according to Ephesians uh, 6 and 4, 
uh, it, the child training means to nurture and education, discipline, correction. Bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, it says in that verse. Bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Psalms 111 and verse 10 says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And Proverbs 1 and 7 says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. You know, you can't, some people, you cannot correct. You cannot instruct them. You cannot uh, uh, change their mind. They're, they're just fools. You know, they've got their mind made up and, and they know the way. They don't need anybody to tell them. They don't need anybody to tell them. They're just as good as anyone else. Come on. And they make the mistake of comparing themselves with others. And they look at others and they say, well, if that's a Christian, I guess I'm going to heaven too. Because if they say they're going to heaven and they live like the devil, you know, and they they spit and they cuss and they and they chew and they, they drink and, and uh, cuss like a sailor. Sometimes when you get them mad, they get mad at you. They cuss like a sailor. Come on. Uh, poor old sailors get blamed for that. Uh, you know, but I, I've seen some people cuss worse. Come on. And, you know, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. And we have, if without the fear of the Lord in us, we, ha we cannot even begin to know the Lord. We cannot even begin uh, to grow at, in wisdom and knowledge. So, but he said, fools will despise this wisdom and instruction and, you know, we, we, uh, we have ten reasons, or eight reasons here listed, when and why God chastises. <coughs> Excuse me a minute. Clear my throat there a little bit. Sorry about that. But uh, eight reasons. When men refuse to hear, as in Job 33, when they commit iniquity, in 2 Samuel 7 and 14, when men provoke God, Psalms 6, 6 and 1, when they forsake God, Psalms 89, when, they, when men refuse to judge themselves, 1 Corinthians 11 and 34. When they stubbornly rebel in Deuteronomy and Leviticus and Numbers. When men sow to the flesh, Galatians 6. When, they, when his children need instruction and correction. So we need instruction and correction. And what better way to get it than from God Himself? You, you see, that's what the Bible is. It's the roadmap to life. It not only it gives us the instructions of what to do, it shows us how to do it. It shows us the, the results if we don't. It shows us uh, what the uh, rewards are if we do obey the Word and what the rewards are if we do not obey the Word. So... It, with God, it's, it's yea and amen. There's no if, ands, buts, and maybes about it. God doesn't change his mind. God doesn't, uh, he doesn't, uh, he doesn't have a double mind. He, when he says something, he means it. Come on. When, when, he, uh, when he puts it in his word, he means it. He, he's not going to change it. But man would like to change God's word. Amen. Man would like to change God's word. But you cannot change it. It is established in heaven forever, the Bible says. He said in uh, uh, the verse here where I read earlier, verse 6, Whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he, re he receiveth. Now, chastening is a good sign of love. Come on. You, you chasten your children because you love them. If you didn't love them, you just let them go, let them do their own thing, let them grow up the way they, they, they want to, and, and let them do their own thing, and they're going to end up probably in jail. Uh, because you didn't chasten them, you didn't correct them. 
You didn't bring them up in the way they should go. You didn't uh, scourge them. Scourging means to whip. Hello, in the Greek. To whip, to flog, to beat. Always translated scourge in, in Matthew 10 and Matthew 20 and Matthew 23 and Mark 10 and Luke 18 and John 19 and Hebrews 12 here in this chapter here. It is a correction, a, you know, it's not a beating, but a whipping, you know, is a, uh, a signal. Hey, this is getting your attention now. If you do this again, this will happen to you again. You know, God made that little soft part of our body, you know, the behind, uh, there for whipping. And, and uh, you know, you can correct a child, you can beat them, but not, not hurt them in such a way as when you correct them and you scourge them. So, and I've seen some children, it seemed like they were harder to raise. I raised four children. Seems like some of them were harder to raise than, than some of the others. Uh, seems like some of them got it right away. You know, hello, first whipping or so. Yeah, I got that signal. Uh, I won't do that again. Uh, and then others, uh, uh, they, they thought they could get by with it. Well, I know I'll get a whipping, you know, but I'm going to do it anyway. And, and they, they, they just, they just uh, defy you sometimes. Some children are like it. Not, not uh, any of them are like. Come on. So, and you know, if we endure chastening, it's because God's dealing with us. God's dealing with us as, as He would deal with His son or His daughter. He's dealing with us as a father chastens. But if you're without this chastisement, He said, now all should be partakers of this chastisement. But if you're without it, you're not really sons, you're bastards. You're not a legal son of God. Come on. If you cannot endure uh, the chastening of the Lord, if you cannot endure uh, the warnings, the, uh, the corrections, the instructions of God, all of that is chastening. Come on. And, and if you cannot endure that, then you're not a son of God. Come on. You know, and, and uh, I've heard some people say, you know, I went door to door one day talking to people, knocking on doors and and asking them about what church they went to and all that, try to get uh, visitate, what we call it, visitation, you know. People give you all kinds of excuses. And sometimes you run across some people that are sick, you know, and they really need prayer. And uh, you start start to pray for them and everything. And they say, well, I don't know if you should pray for me or not. I think, I think God's chastening me. I think God's punishing me for something. You ever run across that? I have. And people thought, well, I said, where did you get that idea that God's punish, punishing you with sickness and disease? Uh, if he loved you, he would give you the healing that you need, not chastening like that. That's not chastening. And, and, but the, they, they heard that from their pastor, from the church, from the doctrine that they believe, that if you're, if you're sick, you're suffering for the Lord. You're suffering uh, to give God glory. Now, how does God get glory in someone's sickness? How does God get glory because you're down, you're ill? How does God get glory out of that type uh, of uh, correction or chastening if it is? If it is chastening, uh, as Dick says here, if chastening is sickness, then all who become Christians are to be made sick. Is this the reward of righteousness? Does God reward us for our righteousness? By making us sick? It don't make sense. Why did Jesus come and his the biggest part of his ministry was healing people? He healed the sick. He raised the dead. He cleansed the leper. He opened the blind eyes. He unstopped the deaf ears. God, uh, Jesus just come on and he ministered to people. He didn't first of all ask them, say, what church do you go to? Uh, do, you, do you go faithfully? Are you faithfully... Uh, attending down here at the synagogue or, or do you pray every day no he yes he just preached it to him and he said i've come to give life and life more abundantly you know and, and uh you know where whenever i pray for somebody i don't ask them what church to go to uh, you know I, i'll pray for them and i'll say now you this is between you and god this our prayer is between between uh, uh god you know this is for god to hear us and, and god's gonna gonna give you the answer 
And if God chooses to heal you, then He'll heal you. And if not, then ask Him again. Come on. Sometimes you have to ask God again. Some people just just lay there, you know, and suffer, and they say, "Well, I'm suffering from the Lord, uh, you know, and I'm getting holier because of it." Hello, how are you getting? How is suffering getting you holier? How is suffering getting you closer to God? Uh, it don't work that way. Some people got that uh, upside down, turned around the wrong way. Is God chastening you because of that? Uh, are you sick because it's God's will? No. You're sick because the enemy has attacked you. Because uh, some disease has got, gotten a hold of you and, and uh, uh, you're suffering and God wants to deliver you. God wants to save you. God wants a healthy church. God wants a, 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 a thriving body of Christ. He wants... He wants to minister to your needs. Amen. That's, that's what Christ is about. He come to minister. He come to deliver. He come to set free. He come to heal and to restore. Come on. He didn't come to punish people. Well, if, if Jesus' ministry was to come to punish people and chasten them, then he wouldn't have healed any sick. He wouldn't have raised any of the dead. He would not have opened any of the blind eyes. He would not have unstopped any deaf ears. He would have not healed the leper. He would have not healed the cripple. He would have not healed those that had withered hands and everything. He would have said, you just stay that way and you'll get holy. You just stay that way. And in fact, you need to get sicker. If you want to get sicker, now you can get closer to me. That, what kind of a nonsense is that? No, but Jesus come to heal, to deliver, to give life and life more abundantly. He blamed all the other stuff on the devil. He said, the enemy comes but not, he doesn't come but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That's the only reasons he comes for. But he said, I have come to give life and life more abundantly. I believe that's John 10, 10. So Jesus wants to give you life. <coughs> Excuse me. So uh, we'll, we'll just leave it at that. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Amen? you got to get that first. If you don't fear God, I can't see where God can use you. I can't see where God can help you. If you don't fear the Lord, you're not going to obey His commandments. You're not going to listen to what, what His Word says. But the fear of the Lord. You know, God can put the fear of the Lord in you. Come on. Now I should tell my kids, you know, when I whip them, I'm going to put the fear of God in you. And someone will tell you today, yeah, He did. He put the fear of God in us. And uh, I think sometimes their mother will put more fear of God in them than I did, you know. I used to pray for them when when, when their mother would get a hold of them. And, and I knew that he was going to be in trouble, brother. I remember uh, one time we was in church. And the, the youngest boy, he, he was acting up and acting up and acting up, you know. And Sharon loved to hear the word. You know, she loved to hear the, the preaching. You know, she had her Bible open up on her, her lap and she'd be following the preacher, you know. And that kid would start acting up and acting pretty soon. Everybody knew it. It was a sign. When she slammed her Bible shut and put it down, that kid was in trouble. You can bet on it. Everybody went, oh, he went too far. And she marched him to the basement and and done a number on him. Come on. And, and it seemed like that boy had to, had to have a lot of that. Some of the other kids said, I guess they learned from his mistakes. But they were older, though. Why would, what? It seems like the, 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 it would be the other way around. But anyway, uh, we do learn by our mistakes. And God chastens us, corrects us, instructs us, and gives us the wisdom and the knowledge. That's all part of chastening. And God wants to lead us and guide us into all truth. Amen? I'm going to leave it at that. Be sure and write for the books. Post office box. 3508, Paducah, Kentucky, 42002. God bless you. Shake hands and be friendly, all of you.